but from our house, uh, the uh, natives here are uh, doing some surveying. Well, this is our little pup we got. He was only about two months old here. And they sure have a lot of fun with him. And you can notice around the house, there's no flowers or no shrubbery around here yet, so there'll be a lot of fixing up here to make it look like something. Well, I'm just sitting here thinking, holding little Bommy. We just came from the post office and wondering how come that we haven't got any mail from the kids for so long. Just wondering if they're sick or what's happened to them. Well, I just got home from work. Pretty hot day today. Took a shower. Sitting here relaxing. It's just twilight. Sun is going down. Beautiful day in Bami Hill. This picture was taken about a month after I arrived in Bami Hill. It sure was a hot day. Well, Dad's just about ready to go to work. Don't forget your dinner. Don't forget your uh, thermos bottle, Dad. Well, I'm just going to work here. This is our transportation to and from the job. So it doesn't uh, cost us anything here for transportation ourselves. I've got the Volkswagen for this week. I pick up all the guys. This is our neighbor's house, Mr. and Mrs. Melberg. Mr. Melberg is the banker of Balmy Hills. They sure are fine neighbors. We think an awful lot of them. Have a lot of fun with them, too. When I came here, this was nothing but a baseball field. And they just started building the houses when I used to walk around here on a hot uh, Sunday. I used to wonder sometimes which one of these houses was going to be ours. Well, this is the hospital where we get all of our doctor and hospital uh, things done here. And it's all paid for by the company. Well, this is the rice fields here in Africa. It was planted, I think, sometime in July, and they're just uh, now beginning to harvest it. This is in October. And boy, those old frogs are sure having a time down in there, ain't they? I'm standing at the end of our lot in the backyard. That's a big banana tree behind me. It's got a big stock of bananas on it. And on the other side of that is our is the creek running. That's our little pup. He's uh, how old is he now? About two and a half months. Oh, he's more than that. Three months. Oh yeah, he must be about three, three and a half months. You buy me? He drinks coke out of a bottle, eats anything we give him. He even eats cabbage, pickles, anything that we give him. He sure likes it. He chews tobacco, too. Speak. <coughs> Speak, Bommy. Speak. <coughs> Notice the difference in his voice from that picture we showed you a while back. And hasn't he grown a lot? I'm in my nightgown here. I've got to have a little romp with him before we go to bed. This is the uh, natives uh, cleaning up our backyard with pichettes. You really hear them chop again. This is the native family that I bought the purses from for the girls. They sure are pretty. Dad uh, dashed them 50 cents so that he could get this picture of them. And the road that you see there, 
on top. One turns to the left, goes to Viatown. The other, the right, goes to the commissary where we buy our groceries. This is Gene and Gus Morgan and their chimp. I just gave him a banana to eat. We were there the other day visiting him and that chimp jumped on my lap, turned around, grabbed me down the neck and hugged me. Sure gave me a surprise. Hi, chimp. Have another banana. But don't bite. <coughs> Come on, little chimp, let's go for a walk. With that banana in his mouth, it looks like he's got a long nose, doesn't it? He's a cute little fella. Listen to that thunder. I'll bet it's going to pour down. Want some tobacco, Bommy? Why, well, it sounds bad. It sounds like it's going to rain, all right, don't it? one morning when I came home from work at six o'clock and boy was it ever pouring down. Of course you know this is still the wet season too. A rainbow in the morning, sailors take warning. These are some of my flowers on the north side of our house. They're taller than I am. They were supposed to be straw flowers, but look what they turned out to be. I think they're coxcomb, but they sure were pretty. Everybody around here's got some seeds from them. It's made quite a change around our place now. We've got flowers planted all around the house. I just love to stand in the door here and listen to the birds sing in the morning. This is a little librarian boy taking a bath out in front of his house. He didn't think we was around there, I guess, and cared less. This picture was taken the day Ray and Herta took us along with him to see the diamond mine. Dad and I are standing in the Lofer, Lofer River. Don't we look happy? Yeah, and underneath this bridge, uh, two men lost their lives several years ago uh, searching for diamonds. Uh, the alligators got them, I suppose. These are our good neighbors, Herta and Ray. They'll be going on leave in five months. They don't know if they'll be back or not, but I sure hope so. But if they don't, I really wish them luck wherever they go. Well, this is Ray Hurd and myself sitting on the Lofer River Bridge. This is a railroad and car bridge combined. Well, this is the entrance into the recovery of the diamond mine. It's where the diamonds are sorted from the sand and rock. Well, it's quite a thing celebrating Christmas in Africa. 
And no snow. And all the birds seem so nice. The only thing that's missing is all you kids. Otherwise, our Christmas would be complete. This is the Christmas card that you see Dad made all by himself. He put the palms on me, the letters and everything. I think he did a pretty fine job. Well, this is a real tropical Christmas. I think I'll go out and do a little golfing. Yeah, the temperature's 90 degrees today, so I think I'll go along out and watch Dad golf a while. This is Bush Station XYZ Broadcasting. And of course, this is your roving reporter from Balmy Hills. And this is our recording studio where all of our recordings and sound effects are made. Well, this is the change between the dry and the wet season. And we usually have pretty heavy thunderstorms during this time. This is the rice fields just before harvest. And in the center of the picture, you can see a stand where the natives sit on to scare the birds away. And on top of the stand, you'll see a little shelter where they sit in to keep out of the sun. Well, I'm just getting ready to tee off here. This is the last thing in the world I thought I'd ever do was start to golf. My stance is not too good here, but uh, with a little practice, I'll probably make her all right. Uh -huh. Where'd the ball go? They have a very nice golf course here in Bami, and I think it's the only one in the state of Liberia. Well, the water is nice and warm. Looks like it'd be fun to go swimming in this river, but this is not for me. Too many alligators. Here, Dad and I be standing beside her and Ray's new car. It was only two days old when this picture was taken. The scenery is so pretty out here. See the sign in the background? Read it. This picture was taken the same day as that picture you just saw. Ray and Herta took us out to see that big cassava snake that uh, Terry McDonald had shot. It really was an ugly looking thing too. Dad's got some pictures of it. This is the cassava snake that we were talking about. But this picture, picture was taken at a distance so it looks kind of small here. Well I got a little braver here. If you get bitten by this snake, you have time to smoke one cigarette, and that's not a king size either. This was taken on the road out to the golf course, and the tree with the yellow flowers in the back is a kaza tree. And the mound of dirt with the pink morning glories over it is an ant hill. Well, this is a sunset picture taken in the harmaton season. And if you'll notice, the skies are kind of gray. That's caused from the winds coming off the Sahara Desert blowing the dust in. And it's very cool here this time of the season. It runs around 60 degrees. It's the most beautiful flower you've ever seen. It was a little rainy here in Crotty when Dad took this picture, but you get to see what it looks like anyway. There's a story about the Bible goes with this, but I don't know it, of course. The tree that you see at the left of the center of the picture is a water palm. It looks like a fan. It's just the most beautiful tree. We have a small one started in our front yard. And they say if you cut this open that the water in there is so pure that you can drink it. Well, this is the guest house out at Balmy Hills. Anybody comes to visit or anything, they got a nice place to stay. This is one of the native women digging in Herta's garbage can, looking for something. 
You can see the big tub of stuff that she's collected sitting by our garbage can in the front. They're doing this all the time. This is the yellow canna lily. Herta brought me some of these from Monrovia from her garden. And we have them planted along our driveway. We also have the red ones, too. We'll get some pictures of those later. I got real brave here and took a ride up on the job with Dad. This little lake is located right in the mine, and it's got fish in it. In the background, you can hear the 6 o'clock curfew blowing. And the frogs, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is our first Christmas in Balmy Hills. Kind of lonesome, of course. This picture was taken about 5 o'clock Christmas Eve, 1965. Temperature about 80 degrees. Now, I bet they've got a lot of snow to home. Here we are eating Christmas dinner at Terry and Bunny's. Nancy and Ronnie Valley and family were also there. We sure did enjoy it. Oh boy, listen, here comes the devil dancers. This is the way they celebrate Christmas in Liberia. Another picture of Dad and I taken on Christmas Eve. We were standing in front of our buffet. Above and below you can see some of the Christmas cards that we got. And on the mirror is the bells that Greggy made us for Christmas last year. Just listen to those firecrackers. Dad and I tried to look real happy here, but our thoughts and hearts were sure at home. Yeah, that's the way they celebrate Christmas here, by shooting firecrackers. Here I am standing by a bougainvillea tree and in front of the hotel. This is a red one. There's also a deep purple one, and it's such a beautiful tree, one of the prettiest ones in Liberia. This is John Underwood's swimming pool. There are several families that have them here now. Kids really have a good time out there. They sure do get brown. Play in that water and then out in the sun. Well, this is a native, and he's herder cattle. They're brought in from near the Sahara Desert to come in here for grazing. Well, this is Al Mowers and his boat. And him and I was out on the Lofa River fishing, and this is what we heard. Right in ahead of us there, under those bushes, there was a couple crocodile under there. We couldn't get no pictures of it. Well, this is Al and I coming in from the bar mouth on the Lofa River, where we've done some fishing. We tried to get out on the ocean and do some deep sea fishing, but the breakers was coming in a little bit too big for us. Well, Al and I was doing a little fishing here. This native come paddling by us in his boat. They look something like our uh, Indian canoe, but uh, they're much heavier. They uh, hew them out of the uh, trunk of trees and burn them out, and they're quite a heavy boat. I took this picture of this village as we was going down the river. Uh, they usually build a, along the river or a stream. That's where they get their water supply. They don't uh, have wells like we do in our country.
Well, this is the B.F. Goodrich rubber plantation between Balmy Hills and Monrovia. And you can see how big it is by reading the sign. And you see those little rubber cups on each side of the sign on the trees. The natives here collect all the rubber and they get eight cents an hour for this. Well, these are real small trees when they're planted and they're all planted in rows. And they're all a grafted tree for high rubber production. And uh, they start producing usually in about seven years. Well, here you can see how the tree is carved and a little spigot put in there for the rubber to run into this little cup. And then the natives come along and gather it in pails and carry it out to the tank trucks. Larry Butler and I drove out in the bush and we met this native family and visited with them and we treated them to candy and cigarettes. What do you call this village here? This village? Yeah. What is the, what do you call this village? Oh, the, uh, you mean this town? Yes. This Buna town. Oh, yeah. And uh, what is your name? My name is David. David. Yes. Uh-huh. And what, what, uh, what tribe are you? Uh? I'm Mogola. Mogola. Mogola by tribe. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I see. <laughs> I see. Well, that's fine. Thank you. I guess your name was? My name is Kona. Kona. What tribe are you from? Agola. Agola. Mm -hmm. What are you doing here? I'm washing clothes. Washing clothes? Mm -hmm. Okay. You wash clothes every day? No. No, not every day? Not every day. The time is there, I can't wash it. You married? Yeah. You married? Yeah. Oh, you got kids? No. You got baby? No. No How children? How you married? No, I got you. I got baby. You got baby? No. No baby? No. No baby? No. No baby? Mm -hmm. How long are you married? Yeah. This is a little store in the tavern out in the bush. Why are you trapping me? Huh? You don't know I have to protest for you? You're trapping me? Oh. Give you a hard time. Suppose somebody hampers you. You don't think I can protect you? Go, go, go. Nobody can call you. I can go, but president can't go. Forget it. I will go sign you. I know. Uh-huh! <laughs> 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 you put this in for law. Oh, oh, oh. I never oh. put this in for something, nothing. Oh. Oh, right, thank you. Yeah, okay. That's good. Uh, yeah. Well, boss, man. Yeah, we'll see you. Uh, yeah. What are you boys making here? We are dubbing uh, uh, the the kitchen. Oh, you making you making bricks for the for a house? For yeah. houses. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, uh, what is your name? My name is Fanny. Oh, yeah. What tribe are you from? I'm Gora. I'm staying in Baman, Shop District. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, now what's your name? My name is Kovac Benda. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what do you do? We do the kissing. Oh, yeah. What tribe are you from? I'm Mano. You're Mano? Yeah, from Senegal, Niba County. Oh, that's fine. Are you married? My name is Azim, my name is Kupa. Yeah, are you married? You married? Have, have children? Have a missy? No. No. This is another native village taken past the sawmill. There are many, many different tribes here, and each tribe lives in a village of their own, and each tribe speaks a different language. These are the delivery boys from the commissary. Now, what is your name? My name is Jacob Berry. Now, where do you live? I live at New Row, Bummy Hills. Mm -hmm. How old are you? I'm 19 years of age. Uh -huh. And what tribe are you from? I'm Gravel. Thank you. You want to get on here too? No. What, what, huh? You don't want to? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. And what, what's, what's your name? I'm Philip M. Musa. Uh huh. What tribe are you from? I'm a Gola by tribe. Gola. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you go to school here or? Uh... No. In Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How far did you go in school? The eighth grade. Uh huh. Okay. And then what's your name? I'm Zina Brooks. Right. Um, how old are you? I'm 20 years of age. Mm -hmm. Where did you go to school? I be the. Uh... Mm -hmm. Are you married? No. No. No Missy, huh? No Missy. Ah, oh, okay, boys. <laughs> okay. Uh
Well, this is the recreation center here in Bami. It has a lounge, bowling alley, and dance hall in it. Well, this is the bowling alley. It has four nice lanes, and we have an awful lot of fun down here. And they only charge 25 cents a game. This is the upstairs of the clubhouse and recreation building where all the parties and dances are held here in Bomi Hills. And the Christmas decorations that you see up were left from the Christmas dance they had. It's very nice. This is the private school where the Liberian and European children of the staff members of LMC go to school. This is the Anna Church in Bomi Hills. Both Protestants and Catholics hold their services here. That's the Poinsettia tree on the right side. This is the theater. Have shows Wednesday and Sunday nights. Charge for the shows a dollar for pass tickets for each for the contract. Well, this is the transportation for the librarian workers to and from the job. Were you going, Ray, uh, tell us something about the unpleasant caller you had at the bank? Well, it wasn't really unpleasant. It was rather funny. Uh, there was a commotion outside the bank, and I, fortunately the door was locked, and I looked out, looked out the window, and I thought that there was a riot. And the rocks were flying towards the bank, and then I finally thought, well, it might be a snake. And of course, opened up the door, and there it was, a black mamba walked in through the door. And William Monroe, Lamon Batrai. I'm George Gaswa Buddha, Basel Batrai. I'm Jimmy Cray, Basel Batrai. I'm Sarah you are Basel Batrai. Sammy Poe, Basel Batrai. Okay, thank you, boys. These are some of the workers in the hotel here. This is the central office of LMC. Uh, Dr. Edgar D., uh, could you give me uh, an idea of uh, what the infant death rate is here in uh, Liberia? Well, uh, nobody exactly knows, but uh, it's probably between 60 and 70 percent, at least amongst the country people. Maybe around here in uh, Bomi Hills, in Whitetown, it may be a little bit better because of the hospital and dispensary service we uh, have here. Excuse me for interrupting, but this is the dispensary the doctor was just talking about. Go ahead, doctor. But uh, I think in the country it's still something between 60 and 70. That's as far as I know the uh, usual estimation for a native uh, African population. This is the Liberian section of the hospital, and they're just serving dinner. Well, this is the entrance from Vitown into Bami Hills. What's your name? My name is Davis. Davis? Yeah. Uh-huh. You live here in Vitown? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How old are you? Uh, I'm 45 years old. 45. Uh -huh. You have children? You're married? Yeah, I'm married. Uh-huh. You, uh, you work here as, as plant protection then? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Well, this is the bachelor quarters. I stayed in the first three and a half months that I was here. It has three private bedrooms, hot and cold running water, shower, a hallway, and a nice big lobby. This palm tree is full of rice birds, and they strip the leaves and build their nests out of them. And these are the birds that the natives have so much trouble with in the rice fields. This is a native market between Bomi Hills and the job. And the natives sell all kinds of their fruits and vegetables here.
Well, this is a native village. And you can see the, see the framework of the house. And they build the house out of poles, and they put palm leaves over the top for the roof, and plaster the sides out with mud, and that's their house. I took this picture January 28th, 1966. Temperature, about 80 degrees. Our, our uh, days don't change here like they do back home. We have daylight here about from 6 to 6 in the uh, dry season and about a half an hour longer in the wet season. Morning, Brian. Morning, Brian. Morning, Brian. What time are you going to Manovia? I'll go around about 7. Ah. Will you have enough time to buy your stuff then? Oh, yeah. What are you going to buy? Buy it. What are you going to buy now? I'm going to buy some copy books. I'll buy me some shares. White shirt. Oh. Uh -huh. One white shirt you have to have, don't you? No, four. Four? Huh? Think your money's gonna reach? Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, that's good. We talk so much you don't even get your bath, huh? Pardon? I said we talk so much you don't even get your bath. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, woman. Hi. Uh -huh. How are you? How are you? Good. 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 What's your name? Good first day. Where do you live? Near Copa. Oh, yeah. What's your name? My name is Christy Sisko. Uh, where do you live? I live in Vaita. Uh -huh. Vaita? Yeah. Uh, what tribe are you from? Pele. Uh, oh, where do you go to school? Zinkia. Uh -huh. Where do you go to school? Mission, in Pele Coastal Mission School. Oh, okay, fine. Thank you, boy. In this country, if they call you old man or umpa, that means they like you. Years ago, these tribes never did get along, and one tribe would kidnap from another, and they used to make slaves out of their captives. This is the west side of Bomi Hills, taken from Ore Hill, and the road you see leads to the hospital and to the golf course. This is the east side of Bomi Hills, and to the left of the center of this picture is our house where we live. These are the five contestants in the Queen's Contest. The one in the center was chosen Miss Bomi Hills of 1966. Well, this is the entrance to Vitown. I'm on my way over to the Vitown jail to get a murder statement from a man that killed his wife and brother-in-law. Magistrate Brooks knew that I had a tape recorder and he asked me to come over and tape it for court evidence. This is the jail and some of the evidence you'll hear. Yeah, but uh, you tell us now that you bought three cartridges, no so? Hmm? You say you buy three cartridges, you call it. Yeah, why you buy the three cartridges from? They think I hear what I buy. Yeah. You buy them good, you buy the one who for me, I can take the phone. That's when you buy the one who knows, that one is the point thing I should do in the outside. So you, you, you show the one outside to try the gun. Mm -hmm. You want to do two stuff, yeah. but we are two. You and who? Me and my wife. And this is the courthouse. Now what happened after you kill Washington by mistake? After you shoot him by mistake, what happened? What happened? Then that then the woman will run to go. Then we make what I say, oh, I don't care in my mind that I'm okay. The man, you the woman wanna kill, then made it to go and carry the guy to go by the man. Okay. I try the one with the water bottom. Far I hit. Then the man can die for nothing, but we have love but they don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. Now when you follow him, why are you dead? When you follow the woman, why are you dead? Huh? When you follow her, now why are you doing? I did it. Why are you Frank? Hello. Well, this is Frank, our houseboy, leaning up against this post in front of the fish market in Vitown. And you can see how they display their fish out on these tables right out in the sun. And it does get a little strong odor when you go by here. We were 
some street scenes over here in Vitown. So while we're over here, we'll look around and do a little shopping. Hello, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Hey, hello, are you? What's your name? What's your name? Manitamba. Where you live? Kisi. Uh -huh. What tribe you from? Yes. What tribe? Kisi. Oh, thank you. center of the picture. Well, that's the way they carry their babies here, on the back. What'd you say? Here, my pizza. I can now. I come back after a while. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Oh, yeah. Fine, fine. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Fine. yeah. I see you, boy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, this lady was very cooperative. She took her baby off in the back and healed it so I could take it. What's that? Come from oh, I come back after a while. I bring my missy down after a while. This picture was taken at the heart of our town, Pommy Hills. The store right behind me is a store we call Pata Store. There they sell different kind of shoes and clothes of different kinds and so on. This is another picture taken right at the main gate of Pommy Hills and the next building right behind the gate is the Plant Protection Department and right next to that on the left hand corner is the the waiting place of the LMC employee for the bus and that was taken on payday in 1966. This is one of our tailors in Viatown. They have their sewing machines right out on the street. And they can sew anything just by looking at a picture of what you want made and taking your measurements. Well, this is one of the modern tailor shops over here in Viatown. <laughs> standing beside the theater sign. Cimarron was playing that night. The store on the right is Mamo's store. These stores here in Viatown are all run by Lebanese people. Here Ann Butler and I are grocery shopping in the commissary. Mr. Mao, the assistant manager, is standing with us. Mr. Mao, how many years have you spent over here? Uh, I came 1975. Six years with Firestone, six years with Hanson, and about 11 with the Liberia Mining Company. Now, what's your name? My name's Phila. Uh-huh. Where do you live? I live in Vastown. Uh-huh. Uh, do you go to school? Yeah. What school do you go to? I go to government school. Mm-hmm. How much do you get for these chairs? The chair, I'm going to give her a chair. Yes, how much? 
That's two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah. Okay, that's very nice. I'm very glad to talk. To you. What uh, what tribe are you from? Asapo. Uh huh. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, this is taken in front of the hotel, and in the background is a guest house, and of course the Liberian flag. And this is the laundry where all the washing is done for the bachelor quarters. Well, this is the engineer's office and the lab where all the ore is graded and tested. Now, this is the central office of the Liberia Mining Company. It also houses the post office and the bank. I took this thunderhead one evening in April. This is a change between the dry and the wet season, and we have quite heavy thunderstorms this time of the year. This is our house in the background, and I'm standing on the porch watching these big white birds. They're a sacred bird, and also a silent bird, and no one will kill them. This is a picture of the same birds flying. They leave here at the end of the dry season, about April, and they usually return in October, November, at the beginning of the dry season. This is one of my straw flower plants in the backyard. I never believed that the flower would grow this large. Well, here we're back out into the diamond mine. This is a restricted area. And on the ground right behind me, you can see one of the native fish nets. This picture was taken in April of 1966 on the way to Manor River. I'm standing on the banks of the Lofa River. Here are Bunny and Terry McDonald and their children. They took us along for this drive to Manor River. In the background where you see the falls is where the diamond mine is located. You, my friend, you come visit me. What tribe are you from? Uh, Goa. How are you? Me, Gisi. Come, I'll show you my tropical hut. Roof very bad. When it rain, can't fix. When it no rain, okay. It no leak. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> this tree fell over the road on the way to Manor River, and they just sawed off enough to leave the cars get by. And it's been laying here for a long time. Well, here again you can see how these houses are built. Out of poles and mud. I took this out of the car as we was driving up to Manor River to see Art Woods, an old friend of mine. We worked together many years ago at Keewatin, Minnesota. He's a mine superintendent there now. Been nice to see you, Art. Uh, how's she going? Uh, good to see you, Rube. Haven't uh, seen you for a long time. That's right. Must have been about 10, 12 years. Just about. Uh, how many people you have employed here? Oh, around 1,500 natives and about 115 white personnel. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose if I run out of work, maybe I can get over here sometime, huh? Just come on up this way and try it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, Art. Glad to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Aru. We'll see you again. Be down to Bomi. 
This is the Manna River, the dividing line between the two countries, Liberia and Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is across the river. This little boat was named after the Manna River. It's used for fishing and boating. As you see, the top of the boat is covered with palm leaves for shade. This was taken on our way back from Manna River. We stopped here just to look at the scenery. The trees here are so large and tall, and the forest is very dense. This is called a hardbush country. Yes, this is the high bush country. I stood right at the base of this tree and took this picture straight up. I imagine this tree was around 80 feet tall. Well, here I'm playing Tarzan. I'm swinging on one of those vines. They are very strong, and you can swing across small creeks or streams with them. I call them African bridges. Is this guy rough, Ruben? Oh, huh? He's rough, Ruben. Are you in the road, Terry? Yeah, I'm on the road. Huh? Oh, this is the road, huh? Yeah. Some of this road is in very bad shape and is practically impassable during the wet season. It's 50 miles from Manor River to Bami and a lot of wild country, believe me. Is that where you go? Well, the flat tire. Oh, flat tire. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not fun. That's a fun. That's not fun. That's a flat tire. How are you? Uh, how are you? You live here? Me? Yeah. So let me try to walk here. Oh. I mean, live in Congo. Oh. Mm -hmm. What time are you from? Oh. Uh, Where are you from? Yeah. From... My country? Yeah. My colleague uh, from Wicked. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You've been very nice people to help us fix this flat tire. What's your name? Rick James. Uh -huh. What's your name? Terry Macaulay. Uh -huh. What tribe are you from? British. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. What's your name? Abdullah Ijai. Uh -huh. And thank you very much boys, for helping us. Uh -huh. Here, give these to the boys. We treated him to sandwiches, and this one boy gave me his umbrella. He thought it was too hot for me. Most of these people are very friendly and nice to talk to. They are a little hard to understand, but they are going to school and learning the English language. After you are here a while, you can understand them quite well. We took this on a Sunday. There didn't seem to be anyone around. These houses are built in many different shapes. We kind of like this little house. Uh, we talked about trading some of our Minnesota property for it. But after we showed them uh, the pictures, they said, uh, no. I met this native out hunting, and I asked him what he was hunting, and he said anything he could find. There are a lot of deer here, leopards, some panther. Very few elephants left around here, quite a few monkeys, and plenty of snakes. Well, this is an ant hill. This is an old trunk of a tree, and the ants get in the inside of them and start working, and this is where it gets to look like. El Maur and I was on our way to the local river and we stopped at the Goodrich store. And I took this group of children 
getting in this truck ready to go to school. Boy, this motor sure isn't working right, is it, Al? the captain will get paid. It's nice out here. It's so peaceful and quiet. I'm sure glad I brought my camera and tape recorder along. What'd you say, Al? I say you better lay it down on the floor. I hate to see it go off in the river. a native bringing bait to us. They're experienced fishermen and expert boatsmen, and they go right out in the ocean and ride their waves and fish. Yeah. Yeah, it's better if you've got another person in the boat helping you, huh? Was well, that your secret? That old That's why I cut you all the time. Huh? of the river going out into the Atlantic Ocean. And to the right you can see a sandbar and plenty of waves when you look out over the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Those 
4,000 miles across there. It's a little rough, all right. Well, this is an island out here in the river, and you can see the rocks up ahead of us. You have to be very careful. It's not the best place in the world to wreck a boat with all the crocodile and barracuda in here. This is the boat dock where the boat club keeps all their boats. And it's a floating dock that must house at least 25 or 30 boats. Well, this is the inside of the boat dock. And this is Al coming up to walk with Fisherman's Luck. Although they do catch some awful nice big fish in here. Barracuda, tarpon, and some grouper. And behind Al, is a caretaker that takes care of all the boats and watches the equipment. Well, this is taken off from one of the mine dumps. And if you'll notice, you'll see a few native huts down there. This lady was been in the United States and came back here and settled down here, and they called it Mammy Town. Uh, what's your name? My name is James Aubrey. Uh-huh. Uh, who do you work for? I work for Mr. Fresher. Uh-huh. Uh, what tribe do you come from? Come from Bela country. I'm a tribe of Bela from Fasama. Uh-huh. Uh, you married? Have children? Have a missy? I got two missy. You have two missies? I got two missy. Uh-huh. Uh, where, uh, where did you catch this big snake? I catch the white here. How did you kill him? Uh, Mrs. Mr. Bilky saw the snake. When he started saying they were afraid, then they called Jim Obey. Then I went there. So the thing was run away. I told the care. I go and move the big stick. All the way to go down. Then I take the spear. Then I juke it in the center. When I juke it in the center, I hold it by. I was let to fall with me. Then I kill it. I call two person. We drag it. When we drag it on the on the show, then Everybody, they come there. Mr. Shabby, Mr. Frisia, everybody, they come there. They say, I'm going to go call it true. I go, I catch it. Everybody was afraid. I go, I catch it, it's true. I call it. When I call it, then it was a quick time. It was a quick time. They put the snake down, went with the valley. Uh, what did you uh, do with the snake? We eat it. Uh -huh. Will you do what you do with the skin? The skin? Yes. We're not skinny, Evie. Oh, you no use the skin? No. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, thanks very much, Mr. Overly. Uh, I'm very glad to talk to you. Yes, sir. Uh, well, this is what they call a python here, or the same as the South American bull constrictor. And the way they catch their game, they'll find a real dry place and crawl up in the tree, and they'll vomit a fluid on the ground. And the animals, when they smell that, they're thirsty, and they'll come to investigate. When they come down under the tree, why, the snake will drop down on them. They killed another one like this uh, four or five months ago, about six blocks from our house, and it had a small deer in it. What's your name? My name is Edda. Edda? Edda Uh-huh. Uh, what tribe are you from? Agula. Uh-huh. Where are you going? I went to the camp. To the camp? Yeah, to my sister. What camp? I went to the camp. I can't lie. This is my... Are you married? Uh, no. Uh -huh. Okay. Hey, what are you doing there? I'm going in the toilet. Oh, you don't have no toilets here, huh? I'm not getting no toilet. Oh, okay. What's your name? My name is Kisa Nyuma. Uh-huh. What tribe are you from? I'm Kisi Batra. You go to school? No. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. This is something you see every day as you drive along the roads here. So schooling and health education is needed very badly here. Well, I can sit back and take it pretty easy here while the caretakers take care of the yard and mow all of our lawn for us. Well, 
Duncan, this has been very nice for you to come here and get us and ask us to come out to your chicken farm. We've been very nice to have you on my farm because we've been talking about this so long and today just happened to be the opportunity for both of us to go together and, and see what the place looks like. Well, let's drive out there and on the way maybe you can tell us something about your country. Say, how does your marriage laws function here in this country? Well, we've got two ways of marriages here in Liberia. Both are legal. One is the Western style where you uh, buy your license like you do in the States, I suppose. And it is legal. Another one, you pay a dowry for a woman, which is about $40. And she becomes your legal wife. Now, those are the two marriages which we have in Liberia. Also, that is not legal. What do you think is the cause of a lot of poverty and hardships here in your country? Well, this is my personal opinion. I don't know what other people feel like, but I personally feel that one man having two, three wives and have so many children with a very low income greatly affects the, the family financial ability. Uh, the cannot, the uh, father cannot afford to send the children to school and give them the best education possible if he has that responsibility more than he can bear. Uh, uh, may I ask you, uh, what tribe do you uh, come from, Duncan? I'm ambassador by tribe. And, uh, was educated in the Catholic school. Uh huh. And uh, what church do you uh, uh, belong to or attend now? Uh? Methodist. Although my parents wanted me to be a Catholic. Uh huh. Uh, now this is uh, this group here is uh, what you use for your market now, Doctor. Now. Yeah. This is our meat chicken. Uh huh. How many do you have in here? Two hundred eighty-six. Uh huh. Okay, we'll go down and look at the rest of them then. Yeah, let's go down to the laying house. We've done a lot of bowling together, Duncan. Uh, how is your uh, bowling average right now? Not very good now because I've been out of practice and uh, I've been doing a different job and haven't been practicing as I've been doing before. And as a result, my average been going backward instead of forward. Well, you know, uh, I would like to uh, beat you uh, just a few more games before we go back to the States, but I suppose I'll have to get over to the bowling alley to do that, huh? Of course, I'm out of practice, but I stay strong enough to uh, give you competition. <laughs> yeah, I think you can, all right. What kind of baby chicks are these? What's it called? Rhode Island Red? Yeah, Rhode, Rhode Island Red. Mm -hmm. And uh, where do you uh, ship your uh, chicks in from? From Holland. Uh -huh. How do they come here? They come by K.I.M. Uh-huh. By air? By air. Uh-huh. And uh, where do you uh, ship in your uh, supply of feed for them? They're ordered from the States. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, is your feed pretty expensive? Yes. When you, uh, by the time you get your transportation here, it costs you about $7.80 for a 100-pound bag. So you have to get a pretty good price for your chicken and eggs then to come out. That's right. Uh huh. Okay. Now these are what are these? Uh, your laying hens. These are our laying hens. Uh huh. How many uh, eggs do they produce a day? Between thirty-two to thirty-three dozen a day. Uh huh. Which is about eighty cents. Yeah, the 80% production. Uh-huh. And uh, you sell these all local, or do you sell them through the stores? All local. Mm -hmm. Retail. Okay. Well, I see you're also raising a few ducks out here. Well, I wish you all the luck and success in the world, and I'll thank you very much for giving us your valuable time and to show us how you produce poultry and eggs in Liberia and become such very good friends. Well, these two boys came over to visit us one Sunday afternoon, and the one to the left of me 
is a truck driver that drove truck for me for a long while, and the other boy was looking for work. What's your name? <laughs> Peter Fee. Uh -huh. Where are you from? From Jalipo, San Luis County. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been working out here at the mine for quite a while? Yes, uh, working for Mine Company in 1965. Mm -hmm. September 23, I was in plan. Uh, how do you like uh, driving truck uh, under my shovel, uh, Peter? I very like it. Uh -huh. uh, did you go to school, uh, Pete? Yes, sir. Where did you go to school? Uh, it created a stop. Uh -huh. And uh, what tribe are you from? From Grebo. Oh, you're from Grebo, yeah. and you're, you're Grebo tribe? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, what's your name? Federal X City is my name. Uh -huh. uh, where are you from? From Grebo, the same. Oh, I see. You're from the Grebo tribe then? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, did you go to school? Yes, I was attending school, but for a reason, I've stopped my school right now. Uh-huh. Uh, what are you doing now then? Uh, looking for work? Yeah, I'm expecting for work, but I never get it. Uh, what kind of work are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for a mechanic work. Mechanic? Are yeah. you a mechanic? Yeah. Boy, you ought to fix my car then, huh? Okay, I will do <laughs> after we finish. Uh, do you think it's uh, all right for us to be uh, here uh, running these shovels? Uh, for you people? Yes, sir. Now, would you like to send a message back home to my people, and especially Duane, because you've been writing back and forth to him? Yes, sir. Uh, a very bad for me to talk to Dan as a, as a friend away. Because first when I was talking to his papa, uh, for me to write him, his papa told me about his address home, and I much appreciate for me to again uh, receive letter from him every day. And now, uh, every day I receive a letter telling me about your home. And, and I said I always send a letter to, to him explaining about our country, how warm is our country, and how is our place look. That's all. This lady and her family was out in the bush cutting wood, and they came out and let me take their picture. Well, this is the St. Paul River. We drove into Monrovia with Mr. and Mrs. Vance Caprin in the air-conditioned car. And boy, was that ever nice. Well, this is the St. Paul Bridge, and the trains and cars pass over this together. And this is the way on into Monrovia. Here I am with Mr. and Mrs. Vance Caplin and Mrs. Rudy Heckel in front of Jensen's department store in Monrovia. This is the backside of Water Street, taken from the Bushrod Island Bridge. This is the Bushrod Island Bridge going into Monrovia. And in the top center, you can see the Ducor Palace. This is downtown Monrovia, and it got its name from Monroe when he was president of the United States, and they called it Monrovia. It used to be called Bushrod. Population at present, about 75,000. Well, this is the Ducor Palace, and we're going up there to take some pictures and have something to eat. This is a statue of Joseph Jenkins Roberts, the first president of Liberia, and that was in 1847 when Liberia got its independence. We're up here on the side of the Ducor. And the tall building to the left is a treasure building. And the tall building in the background to the right, out toward the ocean, is the President's Palace. I took this out of the car as we went by this alley on one of the back streets. And you can see a guy sleeping on the ground in the right-hand side of the picture. 
On the uh, lower left-hand corner, you can just see a little of the carryall we went to Monrovia in. I took this street scene while uh, our driver was getting the tire repaired. Well, this is the Mason building taken from the Ducor Palace. Here in the background, you can see Bushrod Island and the bridge. And this is the way out to Balmy Hills. All these pictures were taken from the top of the Ducor Palace. This is one of the business districts in the center is a treasury building. This is the ocean front, and in the uh, left-hand center, you can uh, see one of the ships out there. I'm standing in the terrace here of the Ducor. We stood here and watched and listened to the ocean waves. We had lunch here in the coffee shop of the Ducor. We had a table right by the window so we could look out and watch the people swimming in the pool. We sure enjoyed it. This business place is across the street from the dentist office where I had some work done. And the dentist is a Liberian woman, and believe me, she does as good a work as any dentist I've ever been to. This is a street scene taken the side of Arbanjati's big supermarket in Monrovia. And these natives are selling fruits and vegetables here. This is the Temple of Justice, across the street from the President's Mansion. I was sitting in the taxi, you see, there, watching Reuben taking pictures. Well, this is the President's Mansion. I think I'll go over there and see if I can't get a few close-ups. What is your name? My name is John K. Quay Quay. Uh -huh. What tribe do you come from? I'm a tribe of Roma. What is that? Roma. Oh, yes. And you are the guard here in the guardhouse, and you are to see that nobody comes into the president's mansion without permission. Is that it? Yeah. I want to thank you very much for giving me permission to go into the president's mansion and meet some of the officers down there. Thank you. Now, you are, your duties are what? Well, I'm the commander of the executive mansion guard. And uh, what is your name? Gibson. Colonel Gibson is my name. Mm -hmm. What uh, tribe do you come from? Well, I, uh, I am originally from Kipalmas. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the tribe that, most of the tribes that are from Kipalmas are the Great Wolf tribe, but I have not to be of that tribe. While I'm talking to Colonel Gibson, we'll look at some pictures. It's been very nice talking with you, and I want to thank you very much for giving me permission to take these pictures. Great pleasure. What's your name? Uh, Reuben Plagerman. Uh, what's your mission? Well, I am a shovel operator. I work for LMC at uh, Balmy Hills. How long have you been in Liberia? Uh, 16 months, 17 months. Oh, quite some time. What yes. part of the states are you from? From Minnesota. Oh. Well, it was nice talking to you. Yes, thank are you. Do you expect to go back to the states pretty soon? Oh, about eight months. Oh, eight months. The contract will terminate then. 
Yes. Uh -huh. And I hope to come back here. I like your country very well. Oh, I'm glad to know that you like it. Uh, would you care to meet some of my officers, my staff members? I certainly would. Yes, well, uh, we have here Major Barkley. He's my executive officer. Uh, Captain Brandy. He's my adjutant. We have uh, Captain Reilly. He's one of the company commanders. Lieutenant uh, Collins. Uh, Major Barkley, yes, sir. meet Mr. Uh, Yvonne and Janine Bisley. Fragman? Mr. Fragman of LNC. Very glad to know you. I'm Major Barkley, sir. Yeah, glad to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, I, I would like to meet the president someday. That is my mission. But before I go back, I hope that I can do this and would like to have him send a message back to the states with me. Yes, that's I believe, uh, I don't think he will form an objection once you go through the correct channel. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Your name, please. Sergeant Leroy Gibson. Uh -huh. And you're to see that I'm not doing anything out of the way, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. And what tribe are you from? Kipama, uh, Scribble, my tribe. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm awful glad to meet you, and I'll be on my way out now. Thank you. Bye. We took this picture as we were driving down the road. Up ahead of us there, you can see a woman walking, and she's carrying something on her head. That's the way they carry everything here on their heads. Now here comes a couple men carrying some logs. It really is something, the way they balance and carry everything on their heads. And if you'll notice, these Africans are not very big people. Now would you tell me your name? I'm Moses. Uh, where do you live? I live in Joseph Town. Uh, where are you going with this wood? I'm going, I'm carrying it to my mother. Oh, for, for cooking? Yeah. Uh, what tribe are you from? Oh, I'm Basa. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you very much. How old are you? I'm 18. Do you go to school? Yes. What, uh, how far you go in school? The junior high. Oh, well, that's fine. Okay, thank you. This is the low bush country. The bush is very dense. It's quite cool in here as the nights are cool and the sun cannot get through. One thing we like about this country, there are very few mosquitoes and insects. As you drive along these roads, you see such beautiful trees. Also, it's so interesting as you never know what to expect next. Yes, that's right. You never know what to expect next. Here's two boys in this creek. One of them is chopping wood, and the other one, he's about ready to dive in and take a swim. What's your name? John. Okay, what's your name? James Mola. What's your name? My name is Sally Ajin. And what's your name? My name is Sanka. And what's your name? Chico Klo. Uh -huh. And now what's your name? Papa Keta. Uh-huh. Are these your uh, uh, children? Children. Are some of these your children? No, we are not No, no, no. Mm -hmm. uh, do you go swimming in here too? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Ain't you afraid of uh, crocodile or snakes in this water? No. No? No, no snakes. No snakes in there? No, no snakes. Oh, I see. Uh, what tribe do you come from? Man, I come from Mali. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Very, very nice talking with you. Oh, good thank, thank you. It's quite different here in this country as it is back in the States. Our heavy rains and thunderstorms come from the east instead of the west. A lot of people have trouble taking pictures of the natives here, but I've had very good luck. In fact, I had so many around me here, I had the road blocked. How old are you? I'm um, 12 years. And what's your name? 
My name is Roger, is that yours? Uh, Reuben. Reuben. Uh-huh. Uh, where, where, do you, uh, where do you live? I live at Stewart Camp. Oh, yeah. Where do you go to school? I go to school at LMC School. Oh, yeah. What grade do you in? Third grade. Uh-huh. Uh, what tribe do you come from? Passa tribe. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, what's your name? No, I can't get those You get sick? What's your name? My, my name Nana. Where do you live? What are you carrying? What are you carrying in the face? What are you, you got in the bucket? Do you use that for cooking? Yes. All right, thank you. Well, this is another beautiful sunset in Balmy Hills. And this bird always reminds me of the robin back home. He sings so early in the morning and late in the evening. This is one of the beautiful flowering trees here in Balmy Hills. It reminds me so much of our lilac bushes at home. We met these three young boys carrying this heavy wood. The two in the back had to help the one in the front get this log on his head. Now, what is your name? My name is Joseph. And what tribe are you from? I'm a group. Uh, uh, what's your name? My name is Park saint mm -hmm. What tribe are you from? I'm cool. Oh, yes. And what's your name? Augusta Sampa. Mm -hmm. Where do you live? Joseph Town. Oh, yes. And you're taking this wood to where? Joseph Town. Oh, yes. I suppose you take that to your mom and daddy, huh? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Uh, what tribe did you say you was from? Cool. Oh, yes. Okay. You go to school, too? Yes. Uh-huh. Where do you go to school? LMC. Oh, yes. How old are you? Huh? How old? Twelve. Twelve years. Okay. Thank you. This is another one of the beautiful flowering trees here. This one has the pink blossoms and is called the flamboyant tree. Well, this is Balmy Hills at night, and this sloth gives you a kind of a spooky feeling around here after dark. It's so peaceful and quiet here early in the morning. We like to take our tape recorder and go out and listen to the birds singing. This bird reminds us an awful lot of the Bob White back home. This is a red canna lily that we told you we would get later on. We have these along one side of our driveway. This is a wild flower. Frank, our houseboy, got them and planted them around the carport for us. This is a flash picture. I took this at night of this wild flower. We have a lot of these growing around the house now. What is your name? My name is Jesse. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have family? Yeah, my mom, mom, uh, mom. Father. Oh, how many, how many children you have? Three. Uh, what tribe are you from? Uh-huh. Uh, this is your house here? Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you have chop? Mm-hmm. Make chop this morning? Yeah. And if you'll notice, she has a little fire inside the house. Okay. Now, what is your name? Is this your mommy? Is this your mommy? Yes. What is your name? <laughs> and where where is your where is your husband work? My man working in my Oh, okay. Thank you. Been nice talking with you. Okay. This is a laundromat and bathing facilities combined, and a lot of them make their own soap out of wood ashes and palm oil, and they also make their own starch. That's made out of cassava. That's something like our potatoes. Can we tell me your name? <laughs> Huh? Tell me your name. 
What is your name? Your name? Yeah. What is your name? My name. <laughs> Come on, my name. You know what I mean. What is your name? My name is Kufa. Mm -hmm. where, do you, where do you live? I say Fata. Where? Fata. Uh-huh. Uh, what tribe are you from? A crew. You're a crew. Mm-hmm. You go to school? No. You married? Have children? No. No? <laughs> okay, what's your name? My name is Mary. Uh, what's your name? My name is Amar. Where where do you where do you people get your soap for washing clothes? Soap? Yes, where do you buy your soap? Five times. Oh yes. Okay, thank you. Been nice talking to you. Oh, what is your name? Anita. How old are you, Tom? I'm uh, 13 years old. What tribe you belong to? I have five boys. You go to school? No. What do you do for Missy? I work for Missy. You like Missy? Yes. How much you get a payday? Two fifty. What do you do with your money? I keep it, yeah. You mm -hmm. save it? Yes. Okay. You're a pretty good boy, Tommy. Yeah. This is our yard boy. I took this as we was driving through the B.F. Goodrich rubber plantation. And these are some of the workers that collect the rubber and then it's dumped into tank trucks and hauled into the processing plant. And this is the tank truck that gathers up the rubber in the plantation. And these are the vats where it's processed and made into raw rubber. This is a pile of raw rubber outside the plant and it's sliced and put on rolls. These rolls look like big rolls of paper towels. Here the workers are cutting it, hanging it up to dry and then it's baled and shipped out. These are the coffee trees, and if you look close, you'll see the coffee beans on the tree. There's quite a bit of coffee grown here. Now this is the muddy river. It's very swift and treacherous. Well, this is a bridge across the muddy river. We're on our way out to take a picture of a still out here. This is a field of sugar cane, and this is where they make their liquor out of, and they call it cane juice. Well, this is a still out here in the bush, and this is what they make their cane juice with. And anybody can make it and sell it for a hundred dollar license. We drove out in the country to buy some grapefruit, and I took this little girl standing aside the road. They all have a, quite a few goats around here. This is Wilma Maurer and myself, taken by the caretaker's place. He watches the boats and equipment for the boat club. And this is the caretaker's little girl and myself in their hut. They burn all the sawdust and shavings in the incinerator at the carpenter shop and it's very pretty, it's like a big fireworks at night. We took this night picture of the hotel here, and the sound you hear is a big bat calling for its mate. They live in caves and have a wing spread over two feet. In this country, they have landing strips all over the interior for the Peace Corps to make emergency landings. And they are all built with hand labor. And this is one of the Peace Corps planes flying over Bami.
the next group of pictures you see will be of Mrs. Jean Coons at the LMC school. Well, Anne, this is your last day of school for this year. Hope you and Jean have a very wonderful vacation, and hope you enjoy this recording someday, wherever you are. Yes, I did. You tell us this time what the game is that you play. Come and love to us. This is the game that the girls play with their feet. Now, would you tell us what you said in the dialect in English? I said I'm the school of Patricia, and I will never forget her. All right, thank you. We had a small flood here. It rained 44 inches in the month of August. The water was about two feet all around our house. It lacked about two inches of getting in on the floors. The roads were all blocked going to Mount Rover for about a week. I've got the Pachetti and I'm ready to go on a safari, but it don't look like I'll make it this contract. <laughs> 